In this project, your students will design earthquake-resistant buildings using Google Science Journal, an app on your phone that can measure acceleration. Watch what happens if I attach the phone to this model building that is attached directly to the ground, or this piece of cardboard, and then shake the cardboard to simulate an earthquake. You can see that we get minimum and maximum accelerations of roughly 5 meters per second squared. Now, watch what happens if I put the house on these markers that act like rollers and allow it to slide relative to the ground. You can see that we have much lower minimum and maximum accelerations of less than 1 meter per second squared. This happens because the markers function similarly to a base isolation system in a real building that isolates the movement of the building from the movement of the ground, allowing the ground to slide back and forth under the building during an earthquake. However, this simple design is not perfect. For example, there's nothing stopping the building from drifting off to one side and falling off the markers. In this project, it will be up to your students to improve the design using common classroom materials. For example, you can add rubber bands to keep the house centered, but be careful, if the rubber bands are pulled too tightly, they can actually make the oscillations worse. You could add padded stoppers to both sides of the building that prevent it from rolling off the tracks. But again, be careful, if these stoppers are too close to the building or too hard, they could cause the spikes in the acceleration to increase. You can even get rid of the rollers entirely and try suspending the house using straws and string. Your students can use a combination of these methods or completely different ideas that they come up with on their own to try and reduce the peak accelerations felt by the building during a shake test. Just kidding! Today I want to show you two ways how to make an earthquake proof building. Hi, my name is Justin. I've always wondered what the natural disasters are and how people die in them. So I researched about earthquakes. As I researched, I found out that it's not earthquakes that kill people, it's the buildings that collapse on the people when they're inside. So I started to wonder. What can I do to help reduce the amount of people that die in an earthquake? So I did a lot of research and I talked to people in different companies and I found two building techniques used by architects and engineers to help a building withstand an earthquake long enough for the people to get out safely. The two building techniques are base isolation and tune mass damper. So I wanted to find out if these techniques actually work and if I could build a model to show how effective they are. To test these properly, I built a shake table. So let's start with the tune mass damper. We got this idea from Taipei 101 in Taiwan. The tune mass damper is often used in tall structures. It's a heavy weight that's suspended on the inside of the building to help minimize the movement and vibration. It's time to make my buildings and test it out. I used pieces from my engineer construction kit to make two identical structures that are three stories high. I built my tune mass damper putting 12 washers on the eye bolt and screwing the nut on. I built an extra part on the top of this building so I could suspend the tune mass damper on it. Now it's time to test it on the shake table. See how much of a big difference there is? The building with the tune mass damper stays pretty steady and doesn't wobble or bend too much. Check out the building without the tune mass damper. It swung like crazy! This seems to work because when the building sways one direction, the tune mass damper moves in the opposite direction and pulls it back from swaying too far. Some of the variables that would change the outcome of this experiment is the height of the tune mass damper. If it's too high, it will not make a difference, and if it's too low, it will swing too much. 
Also, the height of the building makes a difference and the weight for the tune mass damper. If it's too heavy, it might crush the building, and if it's too light, it won't make a difference. So, it looks like the tune mass damper is very effective at minimizing the movement and vibration in a tall building. Now, on to our second building technique, base isolation. Basically, you're taking the building and lifting it off the ground and putting a shock absorber between the ground and the building. It isolates the building so it won't move as much during an earthquake. There are many ways to do this, but we like the straddling pendulum technology by Straddling Pendulum Limited in Alaska. We measured and cut our test unit out of cardboard. This was tricky because we had to be as exact as possible in our cutting so it would fit together well. Dad helped me out by using an X-Acto knife to cut with. Once it was assembled, we put it on our shake table with heavy books on top to simulate the weight of the building. We put another test building beside it, but with the base sitting directly on the shake table. We put a container of water on top of each so we could see what the difference was between our buildings. Look at the difference between them. We found that when we moved the shake table slowly, it didn't make much of a difference. But when we shook it quickly, it made a huge difference. This worked because the swinging plates absorb the energy from the shake table, so it minimizes the movement to the building. One of the variables that would change this experiment's outcome is the height of the legs of the base isolation unit. In fact, we made a shorter base isolation unit and it wasn't nearly as effective as the taller one. The other thing that made a difference was how accurately you cut your materials, what it's made of, and the weight of the building on top. So base isolation is a good technique to use when you're trying to make an earthquake resistant building. Based on our two experiments, I can say that yes, it is possible to make a building that will withstand an earthquake using either base isolation or tune mass damper. I think tune mass damper is best for skyscrapers and tall buildings. And base isolation is better for houses and banks and other buildings that are lower. A special thanks to Larry Bullis at Straddling Pendulum Limited. He gave us tips and lots of advice about how to make the base isolation unit. It's great to know that there's technology like base isolation and tune mass damper that can save people's lives when an earthquake hits. I hope you learned as much as I learned from this. Thanks for watching our video. Bye!